Hello, this is Kevin. And today's session is going to be a two-parter. In the current SQL version of Estimating, you can actually import content from other places. In the part one, how to take data that's maybe not formatted the way I need it or things like that and just kind of show some different Excel formulas that, um, you know, might be able to take information from, uh, you know, an email or a PDF or, or uh, you know, off somebody's website and so forth and to kind of clean it up to something I can actually import into Sage or to utilize in, in other things. One of the, the things I found by just kind of looking around, looking for like a list of bid items and so forth or just content is, Let's say that somebody gave me a list of content they wanted me to bid. So theoretically, I'd like to, this to be a list in my uh, estimating as alternates. So if I just did something like highlighting off of some website and copying data, it may not exactly get me what I want. So, you know, I could bring over this whole darn list. I'm just going to go ahead and grab, you know, a handful at this point. And I'm going to just open up Excel and drop that in Excel just to see what it looks like. So... There's what I ended up with. So my main problem that I have with this data that I've put over in Excel is there's multiple things in here. They actually have a spec number. They actually have an item code. They actually have a unit of measure. They actually have a description. And they also have something in here that I don't remember what that stood for, but it's something that I don't want for this example. So as I'm looking at this list, I need to come up with some way that I can actually get that separate. Because ultimately, I like to be able to bring in a some sort of a spec item number combination with a description that I could go ahead and bring over to do something else with it. So in estimating, I would actually need the uh, maybe the item code in one column. I'd need the description in another column. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to, um, I'm going to auto fit my row height so they come up. So I'm going to create a couple different columns here to help me come up with a column size. And then I'm going to have some values over here that's going to be my data. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and, and kind of merge this together. And these are going to be things to help me break out my column size. And then maybe over here is going to be my actual data that I'm going to then utilize to bring into Sage or do something else with it. So when I look at this, basically there is a spec number. There is a uh, item code, they called it, or an item number. And then there's a uh, units and then a description. So in my case, when I get done, all I really want to have is I really want to be able to have just some sort of a, I'm going to say I want to put the spec number and item code together uh, with a dash between it or something like that. And then I want the description of that to make up, you know, what I'm considering my data here. So in this first example, I'm going to show how to, you could kind of do different columns. And maybe before I go down this trail, I'm going to keep all these separate for this first run through here. So I'm going to say I got a spec, I got an item number, and I got a unit, and I got a description. So let's say that looking at this, the spec number was actually the first four characters of this. So I'm going to say that the first spec code is going to be the first four characters of this. The next value was the next six part of this number is basically going to be my item code. The unit of measure seemed like they're pretty consistent at four. And then for my description, after my unit of measure here, my description's a little bit confusing because they're different lengths and there's this other thing behind it that I don't really want at this point either. So the description, I'm going to kind of go down a different trail and ultimately I'm going to tell it to look for this, the um, colon there to tell it where the end of this description is when I get to that section. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, take the left of A3, comma 4, and that needs to be a formula, so I need to put equal in front of it. So, you know, theoretically, that would give me my first so many characters of that part number. The way that I'm going to do this one is I'm going to say mid of A3, starting with the first position, and I want to go over B3, is how many characters I said that was. So this lends itself a little bit more. So if I was coming down through and I had a great big list of data that I was trying to build out here, I could come down through an indefinite list of, uh, you know, 
rows and things of that nature. And if for some reason one line item only had, you know, a three character code here or, a, you know, a five character code here or things like that, it'd make it easy enough to change and I could have this content, you know, updated automatically. This also lends itself to make it more usable in the future. Because if I get information from this person a lot, I could then come back and copy and paste over this column with whatever, still use this structure that I got set up to basically, you know, strip this data apart many times. So in this case, I'm going to do something similar. So I'm going to say mid, I want to take apart the A3 column. So in this case, I need to know where I need to start. So I'm going to say one plus because I want to go one over from where I was at par. And I basically, I want to add my B3 to that number. So that way it's going to basically take the fifth position in this case. And I'm going to say that uh, C3 is how many characters wide that's going to be. So in that case there, that then retrieved my uh, item code of this. And then in this case, I'm going to copy it. And I really wanted this to be two separate ones. So let me um, unit and description. So let's say that my unit is going to be still tearing apart to A3. So this is where, well, wait a second. When I copied it, it changed on me. So this might be a place that if I was going to try to copy things left and right, you know, that's where sometimes putting a dollar sign in front of it. So it'll lock that comes in handy. So that way, if I go ahead and say, bring this on over, and maybe I'm also going to lock my um, B and C columns from left to right there. So that way, when I copy this and bring it over here, it's going to start with the exact same information. But in this case, maybe I'm going to go through and say, well, I'm still turning apart A3. I still want to add something to whatever my other sizes are. So I can say, you know, B3 plus C3 plus... So that'll go off and just go through and add, you know, however many characters my um, spec and item code was, add that together for 10, add one more to it for 11, and basically the each starts right off at the 11th position there, retrieving the next, you know, four characters is my or a unit of measures description, I guess. Now for the description, I'm going to basically do the, something similar. So I'm going to basically take the same formula and copy it over here. So I'm still tearing apart A3. So in this case, I still want to go through and add uh, D3 to the list. But in this case, I don't really know how wide that description is because it changes on every single line. So in this case, another task we're going to use is something called find. So find is going to let me say find what's in E3. So I put that uh, colon in there within A3. Now, my problem with this is, well, this stuff at the beginning is where this is counting from that I don't need any of this beginning stuff. So in my case, this would be trying to retrieve too much. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to subtract off whatever the width of all these other placeholders are. I'm going to add one more to it so that way it takes off my semicolon itself because I don't want the semicolon to be part of my description. So if I look at that, then that's actually come up right to where that semicolon is in its value. So there again, that makes it where it's very copy and pasteable. I've now got all these descriptions where they'll automatically help me, uh, you know, format those columns out without having to sit there and, you know, manually type these. So if some people give me a list of, you know, hey, I want you to bid this content for me. And, if, and it's a little, little clunky, their information. You know, this is just a method that you could go through there and, you know, try to columnize your data. So that way you can make it more workable for Sage. So in my case, I'm going to do one last thing here. I'm going to go ahead and insert one more column here. So I'm going to go ahead and say that ultimately what I bring into Sage I want to be part of the spec and item number together. So I'm just going to go ahead and join those here. So I'm going to say I want to concatenate. And concatenate allows me to join multiple text things together. So I'm going to say I want to concatenate F3. And I want to join that with a dash. So in my case, I really want it to be, you know, the spec number dash item code. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my item code to that for G3. So now when I get done, it's basically going to have both those two numbers together, but with a dash between them to kind of separate them. Though, you know, I could bring this into one WBS code and this into another one. In my case, I'm just going to kind of keep them together since they kind of relate with each other at the moment here. And maybe that's all my different spec numbers in for these items. So that concludes cleaning up the data. 
And please check out the next one where we're actually going to take this spreadsheet then and we're going to import this spec number and this description into the Sage Estimating. Thank you.